In this video, you're going to find out how to make your transaction gasless. So you've been thinking about how to improve the UX of your Web3 application. Well, going gasless is a great first step. In this example, we're going to create a front end. We're going to claim an NFT. We're going to sign a message and we're going to mint and claim, transfer that NFT to my wallet that's connected. Now, how is that done? That was done with Gelato Relay all in the back end. How have I paid for the gas? Well, that is using one balance a way to pay for all your transactions on all EVM chains with just a single balance. So stay tuned to find out how this all works. Welcome back, my name is Sasha. I'm here to simplify Web3 for you, getting you onboarded to Gelato Web3's decentralized backend so that you can build your dream project sooner and help onboard the first billion people to Web3. So how is the gas actually paid for? With Gelato Relay, you have two options. Number one, the users pay for their own gas. This is known as sync fee in Gelato Relay as the payment is taken synchronously during the Relay request. I'll post a link in the description below to help you find out more about the sync fee payment method. Number two, or you, the developer, can sponsor the transactions on behalf of your users using one balance. As the name suggests, this is a way to pay for all your Relay transactions across all EVM chains with just a single balance. Number two is easier to get started with, as it doesn't require any smart contract changes from your end, assuming that your smart contract is meta transaction compliant with ERC 2771. I'll post a link in the description below with a video explaining that. Or you could use our upcoming smart wallet SDK, and I'll make sure to post a link in the description below once it's available for that alpha drop. Let's jump into how you can get started with Gelato Relay to sponsor gasless transactions. All right, so let's head over to the link in the description to access the Relay dashboard. Once here, you can connect your wallet and this wallet will be the address that you can use to deposit funds into Gelato in order to sponsor transactions. I've already got a couple of dollars here, but I'm going to go ahead and deposit another dollar just to show you the workflow here. First, I got to go ahead and give permission to access this token. Next up, I got to confirm my transaction for the actual deposit. Great, so the deposit is confirmed and my balance will update in a few minutes. Let's head over to the Relay app. We'll create a new app. And here I'll call it NFT, let's do gasless NFT minting. I have an NFT contract already on Polygon. So I'm gonna go ahead and select Polygon, paste the address. The ABI is fetched automatically for me. The function I'm gonna be using here is claim. I'm gonna go ahead and click create app. Great, so my app is now successfully created. I'm gonna generate an API key in here. We can copy that and put it in our code later to make sure that the, the function that we would like to call can be called directly with Gelato Relay. Now let's head over to the Gelato docs and see which API method we're going to use. Here is sponsored call ERC2771, which as the name suggests implements ERC2771 support out of the box. Now what is ERC2771? Well, I'll cover that in a future video, but think of it as for now as a way for a relayer to send a meta transaction while still allowing the user to authenticate and sign each transaction but not paying for gas. When using sponsor call ERC2771, it will handle the signature pop-up, the collection of the signature, the sending of the signature to the chain, a verification on and off a chain, all for you. So all you gotta do is build the request and send it over to Gelato Relay. Let's head over to this create gasless app front end. Now you might be wondering what this is. This is something that I have created to help you get started with Gelato Relay in the simplest way possible. All you gotta do is type in npx create gasless app and it will spin up a repo for you locally where you can deal with smart contract deployments. It will have scripts to help you with smart contract deployments. And then it will also have a React based front end with some helpful libraries to really get you started immediately using Gelato Relay. Of course, everything here that you're about to see on the screen is powered by Gelato Relay. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect my wallet, go for MetaMask as usual, and immediately some information pops up on the screen you can see. These components here, we have gasless counter and gasless NFT drop, and you see each one has a respective status polar. We'll see what that does in a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and click increment. Currently the value is 225. This is on a counter contract in Polygon. I'm gonna go ahead and click increment. Immediately this sends a request over to the contract through Gelato Relay to go ahead and increment that counter. It's a super basic example, not too interesting. After just nine seconds, the relay request is executed successfully. This time you'll notice I have an account with Zeromatic to make absolutely sure that I'm not paying for any gas. Here is the NFT that I'd love to claim. Remember it for later, because I'm gonna show it in the wallet once it's claimed. And I'm gonna go ahead and click claim NFT. 
Now you notice something is different this time. This time I'm actually signing a message. If you remember the Relay SDK method sponsored call ERC2771, we'll actually go ahead, pop this signature collection up for you on the front end. It will send that off to the Relay API in your request once I go ahead and sign that. So let me do that. That's signed. Now the task you can see is pending. Now it is successfully executed. You can see this transaction hash actually pops up once the transaction is finished. You can go ahead and click that and it will take you straight to Etherscan. At the moment it's still pending. So let's have a look in my MetaMask portfolio and see if I already have this NFT. Indeed I do. That is the one I wanted. And so it's here already, which is great. Let me have a look back at this transaction and refresh. And in fact, it is successful. So what actually happened here, you can see that I minted a token with the token ID and it's to my address 2F8. Let me just verify that, 2F8 indeed. So everything went through as required, great success. Now let's walk through how this is actually displayed on the front end very quickly, just so you have an idea. So if I go over to my React component here, uh, you'll see this in Create Gasless App. Once you do that for yourself, the link for the GitHub repo will be in the description. This Gasless NFT app covers these two components. It covers this Gasless NFT drop, this little image display of the NFT, and the Status Polar. The Status Polar is its own separate component, which you can look into as well. It's pretty straightforward. And you can see that here, if I go back to the code, in the beginning of the component, we set up a lot of state uh, using React's use state hook. We are also using Third Web, the great SDK from Third Web, which helps with React, with TypeScript, with uh, accessing the blockchain, reading from it and writing all within React components. So you'll see here on line 34 and 35 that I can very easily use some custom hooks, use address, use chain ID. This immediately pulls out the address and chain ID respectively of the MetaMask wallet that I connect. Most importantly for the data for the blockchain, I'm pulling data from the NFT contract on the blockchain. How am I doing this? Well, I'm using a target contract. The target contract address is set here. And I am using one of Third Web's standard with some modifications, which you'll see in a second, uh, one of its standard NFT drop contracts, which allows you to use their dashboard and upload NFTs immediately. So it's super handy. So you can see that in the actual component itself, we have some tailwind and some you know, conditional logic, but really you can see that I have a button here to send the relay request and that's the claim NFT button. But once I click that, it will actually go ahead and call this send relay request function. And that's where the meat of the relay, relay request actually happens. In this function, I'm instantiating here on line 51, the relay SDK object through a class. I'm connecting through a provider, which is through MetaMask to make sure that I have an RPC endpoint to talk to the blockchain. And then I'm building the relay request parameters as required as specified by sponsored call ERC2771. So this is a fee token, the data, which is the payload. It's usually the function selector plus the arguments all hex encoded. And I'm passing through a sponsor API key as you saw previously. I am just sending off the request and making sure to start timing for that execution timer that you'll see as well. So let's head over to the smart contract code quickly to see how actually I made it compatible with sponsored call ERC2771 and respectively ERC2771. So if you see here as on line six to eight, I've actually imported what's called an ERC2771 context. I've got that open here. This is available in the Gelato relay package, uh, relay context package, excuse me. And this really is how you gain compatibility with ERC2771. All you do is go ahead and inherit it and put it here, as you see. This means that once it's inherited, you get access to these functions. The most important function for us is this underscore message sender from line 22 down to 32. Now, why is this important? Well, previously when you weren't relaying, message.sender is the message sender, the person who is that's sending that transaction. Usually that would be you signing, you know, if you're using your MetaMask or what we call an EOA, an externally owned account, that would be you. But in this case, because we're relaying, we're going through a trusted middleman. Uh, in this case, it's Gelato Relay. This is what's known as a trusted forwarder. For this reason, we have to kind of throw that context out the window, no pun intended, and actually deal with a new context. How do we know where, who signed the message off chain? Who is initiating the transaction off chain? Because it's always gonna be Gelato executing the transaction on chain. Well, thankfully the very smart people who came up with ERC2771 thought of this. 
when you deploy your contract, you have a constructor and you set a trusted forwarder address. The trusted forwarder address in this case is Gelato Relay. I'll make sure to link it in the description below where you can get that address or be in our documentation. Once you do this and have the contract deployed with that address, now it knows that if the message dot sender is Gelato Relay, it has access to this underscore message sender and actually can pull out information from that call. Now on chain, you can actually have the person's address who signed the message. Why is that useful? Well, now you can permission the target contract to be only called by that address. So for example, I could say, oh, this NFT should only be minted by this address. Now I can get that information through Gelato Relay, through the middleman, all the way to the target contract. So if we go back to the drop contract, you might be wondering how I'm actually using this. So what you gotta do is every time you see message.sender, all you gotta do is replace it with this underscore message sender, for example, here on line 35. Now, in cases where it's not being relayed by a trusted forwarder, it will just fall back to message sender, as you see here with this super notation, it's just to do with a class object. And you see here on line 39, line 47, in this claim function, I have replaced every instance of message sender. And now the claim function knows the off chain message sender if it goes through Gelato Relay. That is super cool. And now I can permission, and I in fact on ThirdWeb have set up a claim condition such that only this wallet can get this NFT. And that is a really smart way of having access to off-chain information on-chain. And that's it, we are done. We have successfully implemented a gasless transaction flow from a front end using Gelato Relay SDK. We have successfully sponsored transactions using one balance. These examples, of course, are only the beginning. The sky's the limit when it comes to implementing a gasless transaction flow for your app and for your users. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I will see you next time.